name is Rachel Whitney Smith. I'm the new professional officer at the Maths Association of Western Australia, and I'm also the Tempest Implementation Officer, which is the Double AMT project nationally funded. A bit about my background: I have been teaching mathematics since 1994, when I graduated from Newcastle University. My first teaching experience for my first sort of block was in um, New South Wales, in the western suburbs of New South Wales. So if anyone knows, is there anyone here from New South Wales or has ever lived in New South Wales? I was teaching at Blacktown Girls High School in my first school. So the demographics, it, it was a low socioeconomic area. And so I had to develop some skills, basically working with ESL kids, but also working with engaging kids in mathematics. Now I'll move through this, this was just to, while Leo was talking, hopefully it was animating but it's not, so I'll just move this on. This is just a great slide I found, it's not mine, I didn't generate it, but it gives you the idea that in a classroom you have got that many different children sitting there and you don't know what's going on in each of their minds, each are thinking completely different things. And we need to be aware of that as teachers. So Tempest, I really quickly just want to plug Tempest. It is a project that's nationally funded. And it's about developing a quality professional learning framework for mathematics teachers. My role is basically the implementation of the here in WA as it's a national project. And at some stage, I'm really interested in talking to schools, to numeracy coordinators and to uh, heads of department in senior schools about trialling some of our professional learning that we're developing through that project. So if any of you are interested in um, our first couple of projects are on fractions, Year 7 fractions and the misconceptions and things like that. I've got a little sign on sheet that if you can put your name and information on and later on I can contact you and talk about it. Okay, engaging kids with mathematics. Like I said in my background, the schools that I've tended to work at are schools that I needed to work quite hard to engage the kids. The kids tended to be behaviourally challenged. And, and so being a mathematics teacher, I had to develop those sort of skills from a very early onset. As a graduate teacher, it was so that I could survive. It was my survival mode. As a more mature teacher, it was more because I am passionate about the subject that I teach and I wanted kids to learn about it. Now, I think it's really important to point out that I believe that there are different kinds of engagement and we need to focus that there are three main kinds, cognitive, behaviourally and emotionally engagement. You can walk past a classroom and I know as head of department last year I could walk past a particular teacher's classroom and the kids are dead silent and they're li looking as if they're listening to every word that teacher's saying. Behaviourally, they're engaged. Were they engaged in the maths activity? Were they understanding? Were they motivated? No, they were motivated because they were scared to death and they were going to get into trouble from me. Okay? So I can see that there's other classrooms you walk past and it's loud and the kids are not behaving, but they're still cognitively engaged in what they're doing or emotionally engaged in it. So there's a combination of all those three is what's going to produce the best student outcomes. I think this, I've tried to put this into a, I love Venn diagrams. I think Venn diagrams are awesome. I use them all the time. This is to give us sort of an idea of what I think is the most crucial thing for you to get meaningful engagement in a classroom. I think the relationship between students and teachers is very important. You might have a fantastic lesson, but if you're not having any kind of relationship, you're out there performing all by yourself and you're not engaging the kids, you're not talking to the kids, you're not involving them, you don't have any relationship with them, it, it's not going to be as meaningful as it can be. I think the content, students need to know that there's a relevance in what you're doing. They need to have that connection with the content as well. And then an expertise, the teacher, with that content. And if all these things are aligning, I think that's when meaningful engagement happens. Okay, I've put a couple of, I won't say these are the answers, because if I had the answers to student engagement, I wouldn't be standing in front of you now, I'd be a millionaire. But basically, these are some of the ideas I've come up, up that I think are ways you can engage kids. One is be passionate. Now, if you, if you don't have any passion for mathematics, if, if you actually find the subject matter that you're about to deliver boring, and you haven't found the magic in or the interesting or the, the bit about it that's actually interesting <coughs> to you, it comes across to the kids straight away. So you need to find that passion. Now, not everything in the Australian curriculum do I look at and go, woohoo, I'm passionate about it. There's parts of it that I'm like, it's going to be a bit of a tricky one. 
So my role as a teacher, I find, is to find something about it that's interesting, find something that I'm passionate about, which may be different from every other teacher, you may find something else, but at least that comes across with the kids. Oops, I skipped the other one. I'll put this one up here, proofs, because for any of the secondary teachers, can I just get a raise of hands how many secondary teachers there are here? A few, a couple? Walking past the math staff room when it's that time of year in the program when we're about to teach year nine or year 10 proofs and everybody's <laughs> because of that feeling of, oh, the kids hate writing proofs, they hate proof. We're talking about if, when you're writing geometry proofs and you have to prove this and set it out, there's all this writing and the kids aren't particularly happy about it. My idea is you need to find that passion as a teacher as well. So look at different ways. Maybe algebraically hitting it from the start as an algebraic proof isn't the way to go. Start looking at other ways, looking at some ways you can deliver that proof in a way that you find interesting. My favourite from Pythagoras is the top left hand corner. It's creating some kind of model that as you twist it around, the water starts to flow from one of the bigger squares into the other two and it fills them up. It's a visual picture that the kids can relate to straight away, showing them that What's Pythagoras' theorem? The area of the square on the hypotenuse, the bigger side, is equal to the sum of the areas of the other two. So basically, by seeing it physically, the kids can be engaged. They can actually see purpose. If I started as a squared plus b squared equals c squared, what's a, b, what's, what's c? Oh, I can label a triangle a, b, and c. Are the kids going to be engaged in saying, well, a squared plus b squared equals c squared? Most of the kids in my year eight and year nine class, when I'm teaching this period five on Friday, would be going, who cares, miss? Okay, so trying to get something going about it. The next point is being relevant. I think we as maths teachers, especially the old school days of using textbooks that were 10, 12 years old, Questions need to be relevant, they need to be now, they need to be, if we're talking about statistics, it needs to be current, what we're talking about, or kids will just disengage straight away. So for example, the classic math, the only place people buy 60 watermelons and nobody wonders why. <laughs> okay. <laughs>
As I said, drop your name down and I'm more than happy to come out to your school and work with the teachers to give you some ideas on how to do your